it's kind of, you know, kind of dragging along. And I'd like to wrap it up a little bit now. So that's what I'm trying to do. Right. All right. I think we'd better get started here. I'd like, this is Nancy Cowan, Aranda Quite Library. Thank you all for coming to our virtual genealogy group meeting. Um, as I, you may have heard, the library is slowly opening. I don't think we're going to be open for programs for at least another couple of months, but but you can always call the library for the latest information or um, or look on website, Facebook, whatever you're uh, comfortable doing. So tonight we're lucky to have Eric Vaughn, and he's going to be talking to you about researching in newspapers. Um, he has presented for us previously and did an awesome job. So I'm very happy to introduce you to Eric Vaughn. So take it away, Eric. Thank you, Nancy. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes. 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 Perfect. Yes. OK. So um, please feel free to, hey, if you have questions, feel free to enter them in the chat. Or And I'll stop every so often to see if there's any questions. Um, I do have a lot of stuff to talk to you about, uh, because there's a lot about newspapers. And want to make sure I share everything I can within our hour time. So. Get things moving. So tonight, um, and we're going to talk a little bit about what information you can obtain utilizing newspapers. Um, when I started uh, doing my research close to 20 years ago, I didn't use newspapers initially. Um, I well, I take that back. I did a little bit, and I um, actually my grandparents are from Fulton, New York, so I went to the Fulton Library and before they had all this stuff online, used the microfiche machines to actually look at old newspaper records. So it took a little bit longer, um, but found like started looking at obituaries and things that my, um, uh, looking at up my grandparents' obituaries. So um, we'll talk a little bit about what information you can get from newspapers. Um, I'm gonna talk a little bit about some of the free and paid sites. Um, and I've actually found some cool uh, free sites um, in addition to the paid sites that you should check out, um, how to locate information, um, obituaries and news articles, we'll talk a little bit about those in, in uh, specifics. And then um, if you're on Facebook, Facebook has some groups that are very valuable, especially if you don't want to pay for a newspaper site that can help you um, look for some obituaries us utilizing the uh, paid sites. Um, search strategies, and I'll touch really quick on how to archive information because um, once you get into this, I'll, I have over 10,000 obituaries now, I think, on my computer and how I had to back all that stuff up and put it in the cloud because I just couldn't print all of that stuff. There's just too much. So how can newspapers help your research? Um, in so many ways. Uh, first of all, um, finding birth dates for relatives, um, birth locations, death locations, death dates. Um, when did reunions happen? Um, because a lot of families, uh, my, the Vaughn side of my family had a lot of reunions. So um, having those recorded and who attended, um, those can actually help with clues on figuring out, especially if you're trying to find family members or who was part of your family, some clues in, uh, locating uh, particular family members and where they might have lived. Um, parents' names, divorces, uh, other relatives, um, where people actually lived. Um, actually, sometimes, you know, you, you're trying to find a relative. Sometimes their, their home address is valuable in putting into a newspaper search and seeing what might come up. Uh, because sometimes it may be difficult to find them based on their name, um, just alone. So utilizing the residence address, especially for obituaries, can be helpful. Oops. Said I was muted, but I hope hopefully you can still hear me. Um, so my favorite site to that I started with was FultonHistory.com. I'm going to talk a little bit about that tonight. It's probably one of the most, um, and Larry probably would agree with me on here, it is a, an interesting site to 
uh, navigate. It's not the easiest, um, but the gentleman, Tom, that puts this site together, he does a lot of work in scanning newspaper articles and he does this all for free and his site is just amazing. It's probably one of the best newspaper sites out there. Um, New York uh, State Historic Newspapers. Um, these are newspapers for counties all across New York. Um, it's been a project done, I think um, it's paid through grants uh, and um, volunteers that uh, scan newspapers and then they upload them to this one um, New York State Historic Newspaper site. Um, Genealogy Bank, newspapers.com and uh, newspaper archives are all paid sites um, that have various uh, costs um, and subscriptions. Um, I know with newspapers.com because it's part of Ancestry, uh, there is some discount if you do have an Ancestry account. Uh, Libraries of Congress, um, there's a, I lived in Omaha for a little bit, or excuse me, um, outside of Lincoln uh, Creek, Nebraska, and I had relatives that lived in Omaha. So there's a cool uh, WordPress site out there that has Omaha obits, and they list every obit that's ever been in any newspaper in the Omaha area. Mm -hmm. um, and then a complete list of archives. Um, there is a whole complete list, including New York, every state, it lists all the different paid and free sites um, that, uh, for newspapers. So it's a definitely a, a tool that you should use because you literally don't have to go to uh, a library or request from a newspaper, um, especially most libraries or historical societies will have the news, old newspapers uh, on microfiche or sometimes um, the original newspapers. But um, what a lot of these paid sites or free sites have done is scan all that so it makes it easier to look through and to find information. Um, so you don't have to leave the comfort of your home. Um, these are two new sites that I, I recently found. Um, California, I was having a hard time finding a lot of articles or, um, or obituaries for relatives in California. So I just one day did a Google search and I found, um, and by the way, I'm happy to share this presentation after with everybody so you don't have to take a lot of notes. Um, uh, the California Digital Newspaper Collection um, is a great site to check. It's free. It's actually, um, if you have any relatives throughout the, the state of news, uh, California, they have newspapers that are not offered on some of the paid sites or even other free sites I found. Um, and that's a project that's uh, pay, been paid by th through grants. And then the other night I was just curious about Iowa because I have relatives from Iowa and they had the Iowa digitized newspaper project that has newspapers based on counties um, and I've been I've started to look at that looking for relatives and I'm going to share in a little while a story about a relative from Iowa with you. So my research history, this is my great aunt uh, Peggy um, lived in uh, Fulton, New York, and then uh, she lived in Syracuse the remainder of her life. Um, she st this started this really started my interest and peak uh, in my research in 2000. Um, I really wanted to know more about my grandma, uh, my grandmother and grandfather's side, my mom's parents. Um, and first I utilized my family to find information, but my parents or my mom and her brother didn't really know a lot about the family and my grandmother had passed away. So um, I got in touch with Peggy who gave me some information. Um, and then I went to the Fulton Library and the Syracuse Library to find information. So my, my first major discovery was when I um, located my great, great, my, excuse me, my great grandfather, James B. Leach's obituary. Um, and then also I found some information on my great grandmother, um, Anna Leach, uh, because one of the things we didn't know, um, and I'm gonna share with you in a second, these two obituaries, but we didn't know what my great grandmother's maiden name was. And I found that through looking at an obituary. Um, and then um, I discovered something pretty interesting with my great grandfather because we didn't know a lot about his family either. So this is just a quick picture I like to always share. Uh, I think it makes it more personal, um, the Leach and Dyack family. So um, the two individuals here, this is my great grandfather, this is my great grandmother and my grandfather. And then my mom is right here. So my great-grandfather, James B. Leach, and this is a good example, 
when you're looking up obituaries, especially on, and this is on Fulton um, postcards or Fulton history, you need to make sure when you're looking for things that you don't give up after your first search. Because for example, if you were just to put in James Leach and do a search and you do it as um, exact, exactly how it's written, you're not gonna find this obituary because how it's set up is you would need to have it listed as James B. Leach because it's gonna look also for his middle initial. So that's why it's important that you try different um, search methods um, and sometimes utilizing, and I'll share this in a minute, but utilizing um, the names, um, you can uh, search by a, a date criteria um, and you can also do a Boolean search that searches for certain words um, or looks for those words on every page of the newspaper um, and putting in clues such as, you know, they lived in Fulton um, and you knew other relatives or you knew where they were born. Those things will help kind of narrow the search and the amount of uh, possible uh, newspapers that will come up. Because if you do, a, if I was just to do a James Leach search using all words, I, I think it would come up to close to 2,000 uh, potential or more articles. So it's definitely important to narrow that. So some important information that you can get from this. First, I could find, I found or know, know where my grand, great grandparents lived. So I had their street address. I had their birth location. Um, remember, this is not always 100% accurate, but it gives you some clues to look at, especially um, if you are doing uh, genealogy newspapers are not always 100 percent accurate because it's all based on who's giving the information to and what the newspaper uh, writer was hearing from those individuals um i could i knew where my great grandfather worked what church he belonged to so i could maybe contact that church for records it listed his wife and children and the interesting fact is we didn't know if any of my great grandparents had had uh, brothers or sisters or who their family was. But from this, I was able to find his brother, Michael Herman. And one of the interesting facts here is, I don't think his brother's last name was Leach. Might have been a half brother because it had a different last name. And I really do think this is a different last name, not a middle name, um, based on some of the additional research I've been able to do. So. This can give you a lot of clues when you're looking for individuals and family members. This was um, utilizing uh, Fulton postcards. Again, this was looking for my great grandmother, um, Mary Dyack Leach's um, uh, um, obituary. And there's some things in here that I was able to find. I was able to find her sister. I was able to find her sister husband's last name. Um, and I was also able to find the location of where she lived. One of the things I wanted to mention is discrepancies. So if you can look at the screen here, screen here. and if you and look if down you here, it says the, the sister's name, Mrs. Harry Kulik of Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm sorry, this is a little bit harder to read over here on the right side, but if you notice with this, this particular um, newspaper article, um, and I believe these were two articles written in the, in the same county, but by two different newspapers. This one was listed as Harry Lulich of Erie, Pennsylvania. So doing this, I, would, I had to go and do some additional research to see which last name was actually correct. And from this, I was able to connect with a gentleman from Erie, Pennsylvania with this last name, who ended up being my cousin. And then I actually met this family within, in Erie, Pennsylvania. These are my cousins, um, my mom's um, second cousin, uh, first cousins, my second cousins. Um, so through this, um, through doing some of this, whoops, previous. So doing some of this research, I've been able to locate family. Um, and in addition to that, um, Whenever, I, whenever I've done this, I've also, you know, I just want to share the power of the library and how, much, how important libraries are to our, our research. Um, I wasn't able to find the Erie County or newspapers online, 
So I actually went and visited the Erie County Public Library and used their microfilm to find information about um, uh, the Kulik family, but also about more about my um, great, uh, great, great aunt, Mary Dyack, um, excuse me, Anna, uh, and I, Anna Dyack Kulik. And I found out that both her, both her and her, uh, and my great grandmother had another sister, um, and her name was Rose, who still lived in Poland. We still haven't found any more information about her, but this is this has helped to make some additional leads and can help really help with your um, it, uh, research interest and looking for other additional family. So this is an example from FultonHistory.com. Um, this is doing an exact search, James D. Leach, and coming up with uh, the different articles. I came up with 23, and this is one of them, and it highlights that information. Um, I would recommend when you are um, saving or organizing your, uh, you, I would actually recommend saving every um, newspaper article or entire page from a uh, newspaper when you're saving these obituaries or stories, because it gives you a lot of information also that if you want to later on um, uh, notate or utilize in like a book or something, you're gonna need to also reference like page numbers, what newspaper or what uh, reference they came from. And a lot of times that information will be at the top of the newspaper to help you do that. So I would recommend saving the whole page. And how I do these usually is I just highlight the actual name of the newspaper article information from Fulton History, and then I'll save that in a specific folder per person. So I probably have about 5,000 um, individuals uh, listed within my Google account, and each person has their own folder. So my grandfather has his own folder, my grandmother, so I can find all this information very quickly after. So search types within uh, Fulton history, you can look all of the words, you can look any of the words, you can do exact phrases, um, you can utilize those in quotes. If you do quotes, it'll look exactly how it is, so the exact phrase. And then you can do a Boolean search, which um, will look for, and you could set up parameters within the Boolean search to look for certain things. So you could say, um, I want to look for Eric and uh, my last name Vaughn and Watertown and 1977 with the year I was born and see what might come up with my last name, maybe my birth announcement. You do also within, um, and I'll have a little bit more on Boolean search in a second uh, again, but there's also a feature to look up fuzzy look searches up fuzzy because searches. Not every time will a newspaper have the correct spelling of somebody's name. So if you click on that fuzzy search, it may look for like Smith's, you'll notice here it has two T's, or maybe this is Jones and it's looking up Joan. It's also looking, uh, maybe they misspelled it and spelled as Jonas. It can look for those characteristics also uh, when doing those searches. Remember, newspapers aren't always 100% accurate. There's definitely a lot of, and you can even see it in today's newspaper still, there's still uh, misspellings and things, even with spell check today. Um, so Boolean searches, like I shared a second ago, um, if I wanted to look up my grandmother, for example, and hers, I might do Mary Leach and 1968 and Poland. Um, you can do this in a number of different ways. Um, in the Fulton History site, um, if you, there are resources that Tom has built in that you can look up and figure out how to do some of these Boolean searches, it is a little bit um, time consuming um, to learn initially, but it can be beneficial to help you. Um, if you want more information about that, I'm happy to help after the session and provide information about that. So this is, th there's a good question here from Andrew. Um, this is a good way to narrow that search. So if I have time after, um, maybe we could do a quick Boolean uh, search to help with that. Maybe we can use a, an, uh, somebody else's example. But here is a actual true example that you could use um, 
this is utilizing, see all this different, this is kind of some coding that um, I've used to find James and Leach. And I wanna make sure the file name contains Fulton, New York, because it's a location. And I wanna make sure it contains the dates between 1910 to 1980. So you do need, and the, he, Tom gives you this information on this website to be able to help to, to narrow down your searches. Fulton, Fulton Postcards is probably, out of all of them that I use is the hardest one because you do have to do some coding um, or some of this special characters to be able to narrow this information down. One of my other favorite sites um, that's very popular, this is free also, is New York State Historic Newspapers. Um, and, and as you can see, Monroe County has some newspapers on this site also. Um, I will share, I do a lot of research up in the Franklin, Clinton, and Essex County area. Um, and this, there is a ton of information in newspapers within that area if you're, if you're looking for relatives there. Um, I have done some in other parts of New York, but that's where a lot of my concentration for my grandfather's side is. And that's that side of the family I use a lot for this particular area. The criteria is a lot better um, with this particular website. You can look for there's, they give you these different options. You can look for words within five words of each other. You can look with the words within 10 words of each other. You can, um, and this can help you narrow it down, narrow the search actually down. Um, you can also look with the phrase. So like um, Eric Vaughn, or um, I'm gonna use Kate Peck Vaughn in a second. Um, I can use with any, other, uh, any of the words, or I can look with all of the words also. So I will actually start a lot of times with five words of each uh, or of each of um, five words from each other uh, because that will help narrow it down even to the smallest amount. Um, if I was to look up Kate Peck Vaughn, for example, that I'll show you in a minute. So utilizing another example, this is my great grand, uh, this is my great great grandmother or great great grandmother, excuse me, um, Kate. Peck, this is uh, my great grandfather, and that's him. And then this is uh, my great grandfather. And actually, I have that wrong. This is great, 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 great. She, she should be my th third great, sorry. Um, this is some of the search criteria. So with this site, I actually did Kate Vaughn. I did 10 words and I put in her, um, I knew she died with, between 1934 and 1935. And you can actually select what newspaper you want this to come from, or I actually use the county feature um, the best, and then you can narrow it even down to the city. So some tips for searches with this particular site. I would say use first name, maiden name, and married names when you can. Because sometimes when you're looking for a particular individual, they may not always be listed with their first name. So a lot of times, um, if you've ever noticed, sometimes women, especially I think in the teens and 20s and even 30s, um, if their um, husband was still alive, they would be, um, they may be listed as Mrs. like James Leach, for example. So they may not even list their first name. So it's sometimes important to utilize women's um, married husband's names in looking for that. You also may want to look at um, sometimes, especially I found in some obituaries, I've been looking for somebody, I can't find them. And I'm like, well, I know their first name, but what they did was they didn't use their first name. They actually used an abbreviation of their first name, middle name, and last name, or first and last name. Um, I would narrow searches if you can at all cost to dates, um, because sometimes um, that can help really narrow the amount of searches, because especially uh, if you have the last name Smith in your family, you're going to find a lot of stuff, and, and, and you really want to help narrow your search down when possible. Um, include parents' last names and mother's maiden name in your searches. A lot of times that can be very beneficial in looking for a particular individual if you're struggling. Um, I've used this on a number of occasions and be, been able to find people. 
And like I said before, using home address. So just even the street, uh, there's house number and street name, you might be able to find them and locate them or at, at least information about their home um, based on the years that you might narrow. So somebody asked the question, uh, don't understand with five words of each other. So basically what that would be is, say I'm looking for um, an individual, um, maybe I'm looking for, um, my dad's name is Larry Vaughn, and I'm looking for my mom, Margaret um, Leach. And I just don't know if I'm gonna be able to find um, that particular article, I don't know what year. I could put, um, all of those, those four, I could put Larry Vaughn, Margaret Leach, and with that five words of each other and see what I might find within my search. I can, and I've pulled all my newspaper sites up so I can do a demo at the end. But what that can do is it can help narrow the amount of, of possible searches or possible um, newspaper articles that will actually be generated. So it's only gonna look for those four words within five words of each other. So it's kind of helpful in looking for and narrowing your search down. So this is an example um, that I like to, to show a lot of times is not all the time will somebody go by their official um, first name when doing a newspaper search. So my grandmother never, great, 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 great grandmother never went by Catherine. She always went by Kate. And I knew Kate's na last name was Peck, her ma maiden name, and that she uh, was married to, um, uh, to a Vaughn. And what I did was I decided, well, let me put in, and I put in Kate and I put Vaughn and I also put Peck in the search. And when I did that, it came up with her obituary. And I actually even narrowed down um, the date range. So this is very helpful in looking for information. One other thing that I like to share is this is a really good obituary. And why it is, why it's really good is, I'll tell you a little quick story. Kate Peck Vaughn, um, we don't know a lot about her mother. And we do know that her mother's family, um, her mother's last name, family name was Wright. So what this helped me to do is I look through this obituary and it gives me some clues of potential relatives and people that I can do research on to see if how they're potentially related. Not all the time will they list how they're related to that particular individual, but it gives me clues that can help lead me to that particular you know, family and see how they might be related to me. So through this obituary if you notice there was a ton of people listed at attending the funeral and it did list her two um, sons over here and brothers so this information helped me greatly in continuing to do my research on this family we still don't know exactly how the rights are related um, or what rights are related and how they're related but this information has helped to get us closer and i've been able to share this with other people looking up the right on the right family Another interesting fact, Another interesting um, fact um, about my um, great great grandfather. This would be my grandfather's grandfather. Um, was the fact that he was married three times. His first two wives um, died very uh, young, um, and they had young children. And the, his third wife um, was Mary Minnie Sanders Sheen Vaughn, and. Her maiden name was Sanders. She was married once before to a gentleman with the last name Sheen and then married by great, great, or my, I'm sorry, great, great grandfather. Interesting fact is um, I could never find her because she never, after um, she left a note for my grandfather basically saying that they weren't compatible and said that she was leaving him and left. Um, and the reason why I could never find her was because once she left him, she dropped Vaughn and went back to her first husband's last name. So if you notice here, it says Mrs. M.S. Sheen, and I'm pretty 100% sure because I've been able, able to verify this through um, uh, marriage records, uh, but she went back to her that last name. And I actually have, um, my great aunt passed away um, a couple years ago, and was able to get the actual note that she wrote, and I have it in my uh, history stuff. 
was one of the, it was definitely interesting because it showed um, uh, the place that they were living and um, the owner of the individual that she mentioned in the, the letter that they owed money to for their housing at that time. Um, but this, this has helped me to just find this woman that um, was listed in our Vaughn history book and really didn't know much about her. So I was able to trace her family a little bit too and, and make connections, um, even though she's not a blood relative. Um, another good site um, is newspapers.com. Uh, there are two subscription levels within newspapers.com. Um, newspapers.com and then newspapers.com publisher extra. The publisher extra version I will tell you right now, this is the, the version I believe that has the Democrat and Chronicle in it. Um, Nancy, has that changed at all? Do you, does the library have that subscription now or the older one that doesn't have Rochester? Um, we Chronicle? have what they give us. It's only okay. New York State newspapers and it's very limited. I'm, I'm yeah. actually very disappointed in that. So this paid version and you can get it actually cheaper because um, if you have an Ancestry account, um, this allows you to look up some of those, especially uh, um, Rochester newspapers that you might be looking for. So this is a lot better search. They have actually updated this since I presented last, um, but you can actually with this, with doing a search for this, you can actually narrow it really easily by the date. You can actually add the date that you want or the month, uh, date and year. You can actually narrow it by state that you want to look it up. Um, in, this is an example. Um, this is a relative of mine, George E. Lawrence, um, and I knew what his middle name was. I knew what year he, he died and what state he died in. So I did a, a search and was able to quickly find his obituary in Port Angeles where he lived. So this is a good site. Um, has a ton of newspapers. Um, and if you're especially looking, I think, at things in the Midwest, they have a lot of Midwest stuff. Um, uh, but they, they have a pretty comprehensive and they're always adding to their website. I don't gain money, by the way, for sharing these. So, um, but um, I, if I would definitely, if it's one, a site that you want to look at, um, if you're not sure where to look, uh, this is a good site to start uh, or at least do a trial so you can get, see what you can find. Um, this is information. Um, so newspapers.com, this is my great, uh, great grandpa Dean. Uh, he lived to be 100 years old. Um, he actually got to vote in the uh, 1980 election. Uh, yep, 1980. So he was pretty excited about that, as you can see. Um, and then what I did was, um, if you do, an, and we can do an example after, but uh, if I was just to type in Dean T. Gregg, it would come up with his obituary um, if I selected on Florida, which is where I knew he lived at that time. So this is a good site because you can really narrow things down. There's also World, uh, so you can narrow it down even to the world. There are world, newspapers there are from newspapers uh, Europe, uh, Europe, Africa, uh, pretty much every continent except for Antarctica that you can find uh, through newspapers.com. I, I did mention earlier um, Omaha Obits, um, and this is, a, this is just a WordPress site. But this is good because you, it'll, what it does, I have a family, um, the Dybergs that lived in Omaha. And what this does is there's a, uh, a woman and well, a husband and wife in Omaha that, have, that take every old bit and they've actually put it in this site in alphabetical order. So you can look up people's obituaries, what newspaper it was in, and then locate the newspaper. Um, if you need to go, a lot of the Omaha and Link, uh, Lincoln newspapers are now online. So this site used to be more relevant when those other sites didn't have those newspapers readily available online when somebody would have to go search for them. But it's, it's another resource out there that I always like to share. Facebook groups, um, especially uh, if you don't want to spend money on potential paid sites. There's some good Facebook groups out there that there's people that will look up obituaries for people um, or news, newspaper articles if you ask them. And this one particular site that I'll share in a minute, they have volunteers for every state and they'll look up 
your uh, requested obituaries or newspaper articles. So it's a good tool to utilize. Like I said, if you don't want to pay for a site, the most important thing is they do provide you some detail on what you should provide to them. They'll provide them name, date of death, and location, um, and they'll do their best to locate that. If they can't find it online, they'll send people to the library to search. But right now, because of COVID, a lot of libraries can't offer this service, but hopefully eventually this will be able to come back and you'll be able to look up those, those um, do those searches through the library also. Um, and that's particularly, I don't wanna, that's to the library that the community or the individual might've uh, died in if they're, the newspaper's not online. So this is a free obituary lookup site. Um, this is on Facebook and this is a group on there. Um, you would have to join the group. This is a closed group, uh, but you can go right on. You can then add the states that you want to particularly look at, and then you can request those potential um, individuals through the Facebook group. And they will do it pretty quickly. Um, they'll actually put the obituary or the story up, and then they'll ask you to save it to your computer, and then they'll archive it in another uh, Facebook group online. So it's always available. Um, I always like to give a plug, our libraries and historical societies are a wealth of information. Um, and if you the newspapers aren't available online, go to those locations because you can find um, old newspapers. A lot of times they will have them uh, micro, on microfilm so that you can look those newspapers up and be able to hopefully search for family. Um, I did that when I lived in uh, Nebraska, I took a trip to the State Historical Society of, Ohio of Iowa, and um, I looked up newspapers and birth and death records for relatives there. Um, and I also looked up uh, a lot of those sites too. One of the other things I've gotten into is looking up um, anything that is, uh, I think it's out of the copyright, like date, like, um, and tell me, uh, Nancy, like the, the right terminology, but um, there are certain books that are public domain now because um, they're out of copyright. So mm -hmm. they can be made public online. They're, and Google has scanned a lot of these, but also um, companies have scanned them and then made them searchable using a PDF. So that I've been able to find some great books online uh, for like, I actually found one for Lynn County, Iowa that I had relatives and was able to utilize that to help um, locate relatives and, and, and additional information that I couldn't find in the newspaper. So one thing I encourage is saving your newspaper articles. I do it by family because um, sometimes if you're doing multiple families, it's better to save that because then you could, if you do this on Google, for example, or Google Drive, you can actually save and then and then share that folder with certain family members. Um, so that's what I've done is I've made it available because I know not none of my Leach family is probably interested in the Vaughn family. So I'll share my Leach uh, family history with the Leach family and then the Vaughn with the Vaughn. So um, one other thing that I do is I've set up a system for myself. So I always start with somebody's last name when they when they died so even if a woman um, was born uh, they had their uh, maiden name I'm going to start out with the name that they died uh, with when um, at the end of their life then I'll put comma their first name their middle name maiden name and any additional last names that they had so if they were married a number of times I might include every single married name for that for that woman so when I do a search through Google, I can find that person fairly quickly. Um, and I've developed a spreadsheet with obituaries found. Um, I keep a database of that so I know what I need to look for and what I don't. Um, and then I would encourage you, don't trust uh, your trusty computer. Always save stuff to the cloud or to a backup hard drive or something because you never know uh, when your computer might crash. So I, I've done a lot of work, so I don't wanna lose that. So I save it on the cloud. My final thing is I'd like to share a story, don't give up, um, that hidden relative just might be there, mine was. So I had been looking for my fourth great grandfather, Edward S. Piper, 
for a very long time. Like couldn't find him, uh, had no clue what happened to him. Yeah. Um, and then um, all of a sudden I started, a sudden I, I did a search one day and I was like, I found this guy that was the most notorious forger in the US. And I was like, this cannot be my great grandfather. So I kind of put it aside for a while. And then quickly realized when I started, I started, I went back to it and I looked at other newspapers. If you think, think about it, back in 1877, when he died, um, you know, he was national news. He was in newspapers from Maine all the way to California. Uh, and he died in uh, Illinois. So his, this story, like I've been able to find like full length, full column uh, articles about him and what he did. Um, and I was able to verify this because his son, F.T. Piper, um, lived in Lynn County and was the Sheldon Mail um, uh, newspaper writer uh, and editor. So I was able to confirm that. And interesting enough, just Edward S. Piper was not just married to my fourth great grandmother. He also had another wife. He had another child. Um, so it was he was probably our biggest scandal within our family. Um, and I know, you know, I'm not proud of him, but I do have to say like the information I've been able to find and what he did, he actually went to Europe, um, Nova Scotia, uh, New Orleans, uh, Vermont, Iowa. He did all of this in like a matter of his life in all of these different places. And he was only in prison once in Rutland, uh, Vermont, and then they let him out. He went he said he was rehabilitated and um, he died uh, and he died a pauper. His, the community had to actually put the money together to bury him. And the interesting thing is we haven't been able to find his burial site because there's probably no stone because he didn't have any money. So um, just an interesting fact I like to share uh, because, you know, don't give up. It, newspapers has helped me greatly in finding relatives. Don't just count on uh, the material from ancestry or family search. Uh, you know, utilize newspapers, utilize the library books, because there's a lot more information out there that's available. And then um, I do have some information on this slideshow about um, citing your work. Um, I won't talk too much about that because I want to leave some time for questions. Um, uh, but here is my email address. I'm happy to help people. I love newspapers. Um, Nancy and I were gonna, we were working on a plan to have me come in once a, a month or a couple times a month to help you build with newspapers before COVID, but that kind of got squashed. So hopefully eventually I'll be able to get to the library to do that, but I'm happy to do it from home and online and connecting with people over Zoom, phone or, or email, so. Sarah, um, did you we, see the, I'm sorry, the yeah, uh, Betsy Casey asked a question on, on the chat. Yeah. Um, good question, Betsy, because um, interesting enough, I think obituaries really, uh, after, the after the year 1900, they started becoming more popular. I think, though, if, you're, if you were pretty famous or pretty um, uh, important within your community, I have been able to find obituaries before 1900, but those are really for individuals that had some sort of, um, they were important within their community that they lived. Um, I have been able to find small, like, notes of people dying, but not too extensive in, like, who their family was or um, uh, where they might have died. It just was very brief, um, but I, I have been able to find some, but not a lot. But after the 1900s, they became very popular. Um, I don't, I'm not sure what changed or, like, why they didn't have any before then, really, but I, I think it did become more popular. Oh, that's cool. Larry mentioned um, the downtown Rundle Library, when it opens, has 5 million items, clip, or, uh, items clipped um, that are not online, uh, filed by subject. You can see those uh, files in person. So a uh, great resource. Um, and can't wait till the, the library reopens because their genealogy section is really good. And feel free to unmute. Um, I, I'm okay with questions too. I hope this was helpful um, and I'm happy. Let me, I can see everybody again. 
Uh, I'm just going to stop sharing for a second because I'm going to pull up my web page. Can I ask a question? Yeah. yeah. Do you have any thoughts about, I, I sort of hit a wall because I found a grandparent that was from a county in Ireland. Do you have any thoughts about how you can go about finding stuff in Europe and stuff like that? Because nobody's around to even ask a question of. Um, I am not a good, uh, which did the screen come up with the newspapers.com on it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. I just want to make sure first. Um, there are some newspapers for <laughs> Ireland online. I am not, I don't have any, I have some family that's from Ireland, but um, I haven't really done a lot with Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, I know that there's been some, I, I thought there's been some workshops in the past. Larry might be able to, to say um, on, Irish records or Irish research, but or on Ireland research, but I haven't done any. Um, we can do a quick check here. Let's just take a quick look. Yeah, actually, Kelly Kester just said that there are a bunch of okay. papers from Ireland on newspapers.com. Oh, there are. Oh, good. Thank you. And also, also um, oh, yeah, 147. Yeah, there's a man from the RGS, Dennis Hogan, who's an Irish research specialist, and he comes to all, nearly all of our meetings, so he'd be the one to ask for Ireland. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, this is newspapers.com, and as you can see, like, there's six for Belfast. Like, I'm not sure what city that is under there, for, um, but it, it, it has multiple in different parts of the country, so... That one's Dublin. <laughs> or that one's Dublin? Okay, thanks. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. What about um, pre-revolutionary war? I mean, are newspapers back then online or are they helpful? There are, there are some online. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how many of those survive though because I, I do know that there are some that it, it all depends on if they've been um, if they were they might have not like have they been put on microfiche and then that microfiche put uh, computerized or if they have scanned any of those um, but the, I, I always say try your, like put it in or or definitely um, if we look at for example whoops. The search range for um, New York State records is from 1725 to 2018. So you might be able to find some um, within um, the New York State records. You could try newspapers.com. Uh, I haven't had, I haven't looked up a lot pre-revolutionary. Um, most of my research has been done post-revolutionary war. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, can you hear me? I have a question. Yeah. Um, when you uh, find an article in a newspaper, say it's not an old bit, say, say you wanted to find something that is on two pages, you know, like, like say you had a relative that, that may be a sports, you know, uh, oh. great, and they have something on the front page, and then they have something on another page. Do you use anything special to clip those articles? Like, is there a is, is there a software that you use when you look at a newspaper to clip that article like that? Or do you just is, go however the newspaper lets you grab a page? I don't know. I don't understand how you grab a page from a newspaper. Okay, so say like, uh, let's just look up George. We'll use this one. <clears throat> so some sites That. 
So some sites like newspapers allows you to clip and they, you can clip the site, the article that you want out and then you could save it to your desktop. Some programs, I, Fulton Newspapers is a good example. I would save the entire page um, and then save it again so that you could say, you always wanna save the original page so you can see everything on it, but then save it as like a copy and then you can cut it out from there. And there's a way, there's, do you have a Mac or a PC computer? PC. PC. So um, I'm not as familiar with PCs. I apologize. I have a Mac, but we can snipping, actually, you can call the snipping tool on Windows. Tool, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Larry. Uh -oh. Okay. Yeah. And then you could snip that, that article out. Um, you may have to have them as two files if they're on two different pages. There is probably software out there that you can combine them into one page. Um, but then, you know, you could have it, uh, just save it as two files and then send those files to people that you might want to share it with or save it in one folder. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. I'm the one with the blank screen. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm a blank person. However, <laughs> Do you have any uh, specializing in Ohio? I've done some in Ohio. I have relatives um, from Ohio uh, and I've used, I think, um, genealogy bank or newspapers.com for Ohio. Okay. Depending on what area you want or if you want to send me an email with a relative, I can look, see if I can find them you know, provide me like a year if you want a certain type of art, if you want an obituary on somebody, I can see what I can find and then I can um, let you know what the best site for if you're looking for a certain community, for example, also. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Eric, I'm going to send an email you too. Yeah. About Ohio. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I love helping people. So, and I, I, I love, um, newspapers. It's addicting. If you get into this, like I can't stop sometimes looking for, I need to look for the next article or the next person like that I'm trying to find information on. That's um, how genealogy is. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good hobby though. I, it's, I, I do, you know, um, that's why I recommend the, the, if Facebook is free, I know a lot of people don't, some people don't like Facebook, but joining just to get a, be a part of those, um, if you don't want to pay for those subscription sites and have somebody else look it up and send it to you, there's people out there that like to do that. So they're willing to help and, and look for uh, newspapers if you, but there's also, I'll share this presentation with Nancy so, so she can share it with everybody tonight. But I also think it's oh, important, great. Um, uh, you know, there's a ton of free newspapers that communities have put online on library websites or historical societies. And even just doing a Google search sometimes on a particular city, see what news, old newspapers they have, um, you, you might strike gold and be able to find a, a relative that you've been looking for for a long time. So. I've been able to do that. I was just working on a family from Wyoming. And um, I think even Wyoming, that was the one I forgot. Wyoming has a whole um, newspaper project also and was able to find some interesting articles uh, about relatives in the early part of um, the, you know, the mining and um, I think especially for coal within Wyoming itself, so. And Eric, um, Cliff asked, what is Family View at the left top of your page on the chat? Oh, Family View. Oh, this is my, uh, this is my Ancestry account. Hmm. So 
I have um, newspaper uh, archive is a is another good. I usually I this one I get once a year. I pay for the year. Um, and it's, they have nine nine million different articles. Um, Newspapers.com is an, another paid genealogy bank. Um, genealogy bank is interesting. Oh, and something I want to mention. Um, on Ancestry, if an Ancestry account, and probably even through the library account, uh, a lot of the newspaper.com obituaries have a have been referenced at least within, um, and you may even notice this when you're doing a, a search on a relative, uh, newspaper.com, a lot of those obituaries are now coming up in your searches or your, your little leafs uh, on Ancestry. So just another tool um, to help you if to locate some mm -hmm. if you're looking for an obituary newspaper since newspapers.com I think is owned by Ancestry it links those things together but I do highly recommend if you haven't um, and I I want to give a disclaimer about Fulton uh, postcards it's not just Fulton New York you can see he's almost 50 million pages of newspapers from US and Canada and he doesn't even, it's not just newspapers. Um, if you are from Fulton, New York or Oswego County, he's done a lot with um, old yearbooks on the site, directories. So a lot of, and this is Tom, he's a very unique character. Um, and I think Larry can confirm this, but I think he's made a, like he's, I think in his seventies now, but has agreed to make sure this site gets to somebody to a, I think Northern, that, um, newspaper, um, New York newspapers down yeah. the road. So yeah, he's, he's been talking with the programmer for there because Tom does know that it's a little tough to use, but Hey, it's free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this, he, he literally gets up in the morning to drinks a coffee in his breakfast and then goes to scanning and he doesn't quit. I think sometimes till 11 o'clock at night. Wow. <laughs> What, so you mentioned Fulton has some um, things from Canada. Do you yep. have anything else for Canada? Um, I know there's, um, I've been able to find some relatives um, through newspaper articles on uh, uh, newspapers.com. Um, I think for Alberta, uh, you can do a, it actually, you can actually browse, I think by, I don't use this a lot, but you can browse by country to see what newspapers they might have. So if, for Ontario, uh, it could look, there's newspapers for Ottawa, Toronto, and Windsor. And then you can find out what years that they might have or what newspapers they may have available for that time period. So, but I would also for Canada, look on, do a Google, Google search for the town or for the um, community that might have a newspaper and, and type in uh, like old newspapers uh, and see what might come up because you might even be able to, to uh, they might have them online for free. Um, so there have been some, I think done through the um, uh, National Archives. Um, they have been scanned through a newspapers project in the US but Canada might have the same type of project or something similar. So to go on the Google search, yep. we would type in um, the state and the, the town that we're kind of narrowing in on. Yeah, so it, say, say you wanna like, I have, I might have relatives in uh, um, Akron, Ohio. I might just type in Akron, Ohio, uh, old newspapers and okay. see what comes up and see what kind of search, just bring a simple Google search like that, or even checking out their Akron um, Historical Society to see they might have reference on their website with what newspapers might be available within that community or what they might have within their uh, research or what might be available even online for free. And a lot of places have started to link that even the libraries um, sometimes will link to some of those materials right off of their website if they have a genealogy uh, resource. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So it's 802. So uh, I'm happy to stay on for a few more minutes. Um, 
but I like, like I said, feel free to email me. Um, I do work during the day, uh, but happy to help uh, like if I, in the evening um, or uh, on the weekend, um, we can uh, talk through email or if you want to talk through zoom or something, I have access to, to zoom or you can, we can even chat over the phone. So whatever's best for you. Happy researching. <laughs> so thank you, Eric, so much as usual. You did a wonderful job and people are very grateful. I'm seeing a lot of thank yous and um, great information on the chat. So I'm not going to get it out tonight, but he is going to send out the uh, presentation to me. So I will send that. And I'm also making, uh, I'm saving the chat. So the other information that was sent through the chat, I'm going to include as well. So that should get you with, off to a good start with newspaper researching. Um, and he, we, he does have his email listed right, right on, the, um, on the presentation. So thank you again, Eric. We really appreciate it. And hopefully, hopefully we'll see you all soon at the library. And I will send out information about next month's genealogy program. And I hope everybody has a great evening. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. No Thanks problem. Have a great everybody. night. Thank you. This was great. Thank you, Nancy. This worked perfect. Yeah, that was really good. And I liked that you were able to show the, um, the examples at the end, you know, like the live searching. I think yeah. it's helpful for people to see, see it in action. So. Thank you, thank you again, and uh, no yeah, we'll, we'll we'll keep in touch uh, about when we open up again, and um, so I'll just keep everybody informed. Since I have you on, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, sure. Were you ever able to get the eight millimeter machine up and running? Yes. Okay, I want to go through movie. training. Yeah, the the training the eventually. Movie? My yeah, my my great my well, my uncle sent me some eight millimeter reels that we want to digitize. So yes, when that yeah. when that's that'll probably be down the road a ways, but at least yeah. I, I know I can get training eventually. So yeah, it's being used as a storage room right now, our maker's lab. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll get there though. We'll get okay. there. Okay. So All gonna right. Sign up. Unless anybody okay. has any other questions. Good night, everybody. All right. Good night, Good night everybody. Thank you. Oh, and uh, Nancy, I'll send you the. Okay, great. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.